Right. Hi, everyone. I'm Vashti, and I am the Rush Chancellor. Rush is Calenteer's Royal University of Sheer Havoc, and we are dedicated to promoting education of medieval history and Calenteer culture. And today, Rush is going to review the Seneschal position. And hopefully this is going to give us um, a lot of useful information about what the position entails in case you may want to apply for it at some point. So we often talk about the Seneschal position as the executive officer of the group or the president of the group. And my very brief experience as Seneschal was here, read the handbook and turn in quarterly reports. It didn't give me a whole lot of training on what's actually involved in the role. So let's start with that. Um, so you guys start thinking about what all you actually do and Let's go through and introduce our panel and give us your SCA name, if you're current or former, and what level um, you were Seneschal at. Go alphabetical, I can start. I'm uh, Lord Randlar. I've been an SCA for about 35 years. I'm currently the Seneschal for the Barony of Forgotten City, which is Greater Kansas City. Um, I, I've stepped into this role about a year ago. Um, at the request of the baronage to put in a, a bid. So that's, that's where I became part of this. I'm sorry. I don't know. Else? Okay. Um, hi. I don't have a camera. I apologize. I'm Lady Alicia de Mortain. I am the current Seneschal of Carlsby. And I've been Seneschal for a few years. Uh, sometime over COVID, I started, I think. Um, and I didn't really plan on it. I was kind of voluntold that Carlsby was going to be absorbed into Forgotten Sea unless we had a Seneschal. So I uh, was voluntold to be Seneschal. But I also was totally okay with that because I've held positions in other volunteer organizations before. And I really love the SCA. I love Calenteer. And I'm pr pretty much dedicated to breathing new life into Carlsby. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've been in the SCA for about 30 years. I'm Galen. Uh, I've been in the SCA for about 25 years. Um, and I've held most of the different officer positions that exist, um, except for Exchequer. And uh, I was Kingdom Seneschal. Um, currently, I don't have a job until uh, the beginning of next month where I step back up as the emergency central at the kingdom level. No, no, you're my, you're my deputy uh, the archer guy. Oh, sure. I'm a marshal <laughs> in a couple of different areas, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I've held a lot of, I wear a lot of hats. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Torquil. McRuder. I am a Seneschal for Villa Frumentaria. It's the new Seneschal, or new Shire to the Kingdom of Calentier. I've been uh, in SEA for about two and a half years. I am the original only Seneschal so far for Villa Frumentaria. I started the from ground up, reading the book and studying the book and getting help from Galen, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm Toby Brian Stoddard. Um, I'm the former Seneschal for the Barony of Atavia in Wichita. Um, I started um, just as COVID was hitting. Uh, so about January of 2020 um, is about when um, I started the SCA. Excellent. Well, thank you all for taking some time out to do this. Um, so aside from reading the book and turning in quarterly reports, what do you do? What so <laughs> you are the support staff for your entire barony or shire. You are kind of in, in Batavia. I'm the person that they come to if they have questions or need answers or need guidance and where to go for things. So uh, you're kind of the support staff. You're also the legal representative. So if there's contracts involved with sites and events, you're that person too. Okay. Yeah, basically, if you don't have a hat to fill the position in your barony, shire, or, or canton, you are that position until it's filled, which 
you know, you have to promote different positions. You have to, you know, if you don't have a position, you have to promote those positions to find officers to fill those positions. Um, ideally, you would also help have a, a deputy to help you and also fill the roles of deputies for other other positions within the Shire. Because other, otherwise, yeah, it this is this is a it's a ship. You can't run the entire ship by yourself. So it, it has a lot to do with uh, communication, um, both with your populace and your your other officers to make sure that everybody's doing what they need to do. Um, again, every quarter you have to remind everybody, hey, you know, September we're we're in, ending the quarter. You got you've got 15 days to get reports in. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, definitely reminding people of reports, and then also, in addition to what everyone else has said, um, being a moderator between some very strong personalities and some very set opinions and just kind of keeping everyone on the same lines of, hey, we all love being here. We all love this game. We all love different aspects of history. And, you know, we can get along for a few hours a week or for a weekend every couple of months, even if so-and-so has a different opinion about something than you do. Yeah, the, the uh, essential role is kind of the first level of something goes wrong, you talk to the Seneschal, and if the Seneschal doesn't take care of it, then they escalate it to your your kingdom reps, and then kind of up the hill. But we, we try to, as Tisha says, you know, we, we would try to keep everything at a nice dull roar, keep everything, you know, running, keep the show moving, and make it look seamless. As a new uh, Shire, my main job was herding cats. We have a lot of new people with a lot of great energy. And all, we have a few good members that have been in the SEA for a while, but we had a lot of new people. So trying to focus that energy in the right direction and, and getting stuff going and stuff was fun. And that's there's been a couple of times I thought about bringing a squirt bottle to the business meeting so I can herd the cat <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> So when you run into strong personalities, when you run into conflict between members of your group or you and the members of your group, how do you handle that? Well, in the baronial level, um, we, we put together a quorum. So um, it's usually myself, the deputy seneschal, and the baronage, like Kendall or uh, Alianara. And we start with that quorum. And then we try to work from that quorum out. So if we need to bring in, you know, somebody also has knowledge about the situation, we can invite them to that quorum. Typically, like like I said, we try to keep it small. And then if, if it goes beyond that quorum, we try to keep it open communication so nobody feels left out. So that, that, was, that was the hardest part for me is the fact that, you know, the previous Seneschal was... It's all mine. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it all myself. I'm gonna keep it to myself because I am the legal representative. But you know, at the same time, you have to work with your 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 peers. You have to work with your your other other people within. Otherwise, people feel left out. And so that's where that strong personality. If they feel left out, you have to make them feel included. Even like Torkel says, hurting the cats in the direction you want them, but to make them feel like they're part of the the herd. For me, a big part of it also is I, I take a step back and I take my ego out of it. Um, if I take things very personally and let my ego get involved, like the, oh my gosh, I've done this for so many years and all the things, and I take it personally, I'm going to get angry and not be able to handle things. So I, like I said, take, take a step back. I take my ego out of it. I know it's, it's hard to do. Um, but it's something I do at my job a lot, so <laughs> that kind of helps. Um, and then I'm able to listen, and I've got, um, I actually, in one of my jobs, I teach a class on ethics and problem solving, um, and it's for, like, problem solving with customers, but it's, I use those same steps of asking questions and um, finding ways to come to an agreement so that hopefully we can have an everybody wins situation instead of an everybody loses situation. 
Um, but a lot of it is asking questions, getting down to what is really bothering people versus what they're actually saying on the surface is bothering them. Because they'll say things on the surface, but what's really bothering them is usually something a little deeper than that, that someone needled them in the personality or just really got to them. And so then they become reactionary instead of their normal, night. well, maybe not nice selves, but their normal personable selves. So yeah. that's, yeah, that's kind of how I do it is just follow the, there's a step-by-step -step problem solving thing of ask this question and then make these decisions based on answers to these questions. Yeah. That's true. Cause some things they, you know, they'll bring in the problem. That's really not what they're trying to get at. It's some other root of the issue uh, that you really need to get to and problem solve before you can actually solve what they brought to you. Now there's typically something else behind it. Another reason. I've also found that um, somebody brings a problem with you as a moderator, you want to listen to their problem, listen to their full side. Mm -hmm. Then you want to seek out the other side and listen to their full side, separate conversations, because the, the solution's usually somewhere in the middle. Yep, agreed. Exactly. And a lot of conflict resolution takes place yes. at the local level. Yes, um, a lot of conflict. It, it might get referred to the kingdom level, but it will get referred back down to the local level just to make sure that the people there have dealt with it first um, yeah. and that it needs to come up higher. Because um, once it gets to the kingdom level, the only level beyond that is society and the board of directors, and you don't want them making the decision. Because <laughs> yeah. whatever they decide will be final, and it probably won't be what you want. So it's, it's not a bad thing, too, when you have somebody come to you with the conflict of, you know, what do they want to see out of it? What's What would be a happy yeah for them you know because it's an important thing to ask yeah you may not know you may think you know what they really want but it can be something completely different so ask them what they're looking for not to ask them a reasonable solution what is a reasonable solution because people can go to extremes but you know you were looking for something happy in the middle so what's reasonable and sometimes they just want somebody to talk to about it mm -hmm. they're frustrated mm -hmm. and they want to be heard and it's like that's fine yeah the other the other thing is to if you do have a conflict come up document yes Always. yes you have you have conversation a, absolutely document, conversation a conversation b document conversation b yes then you get everybody together you document the the resolution process yep. uh that is that is the biggest thing that i think i've seen so far is the fact that you know like when we have every, every month we have to have a curia meeting which is our officers meeting which the public's invited to attend to we do detailed notes on that every month that way everybody knows what's going on but when you know it comes to the end, end of the quarter and you have to, to say okay well we have these issues that we had to solve in this manner has to be documented somewhere you had mentioned that when you have a quorum it includes the uh the baronage i guess what's the difference between what the seneschal does and what the baronage does that's actually a great question. Um, the baronage is, is, is the land baronage. So the, the barony of Forgotten Sea actually, the, the it's like a shire. We have the borders of roughly the, the greater Kansas City area. We also have you know our neighbors to the south, which is uh, Carnalar Shire. Then we also have our neighbors to the east, which is the uh, Aston Tor. Sorry about the dogs. Um, Aston Tor, which is a canton. So they have not actually elevated to a shire status yet. And then we have our neighbors to the north, Lost Moor. So we we actually are mainly controlling the area of Greater Kansas City. However, the baronial lands incorporate everything between other baronial lands. So I've got Northeast Kansas, whereas uh, the barony of Wichita has most of Southern Kansas. Um, so it's a larger larger picture. So the Seneschal is still in charge of the local group. The baronage is an elected official from Crown selects those individuals. Yep. So um, when a, when a baronage is looking for replacement of a baronage, they actually the Crown asks for letters of intent. It's not my populace. And those letters of intent go to the Crown. The Crown then decides on who will become the next baronage, baron, baroness, or you know, in the case of uh, some of them lately, baron and baron, or baroness and baroness, or but that baronage is serving the crown for the greater area where the seneschal or the you know local office 
serves mostly the local office. Um, the other thing is the seneschal is the legal representative as appointed. We have the warrant that is appointed to have to report to the kingdom seneschal. The baron and baroness do not have any legal representation to the SDA at all. They are literally figureheads for the crown. Yep. So their actual legal responsibility, they really don't have it. An e easy way to think about it is that the seneschal deals with the corporate side mm -hmm. and the crown and the baronages deal with the, the society aspects, the game side of it, if you will. Um, so they are the people who are supposed to be the leaders of whatever level they're at. So they're leaders of the kingdom or the crown. Um, the leaders of a principality would be the prince and princess. Um, the leaders of a, a local area barony would be a baronage. Um, and they're the ones that are supposed to be leading. We basically oversee that and make sure that it's not running afoul of anything from a corporate perspective. We facilitate and we work with them. Yeah, we, we keep kingdom law in check no matter what we do. So we, we are the legal representative to make sure that is what we're doing fair, honest, just, is what we're doing within the laws of corporate and society. Um, you know, we all, one of the things that I was recommended when I first became Seneschal is I keep a copy of all of the COVID lists. I keep copies of all the, the uh, weapons authorizations forms and all of the, um, you know, if you're if you're not a blue card holder, you have to sign a a, a legal you know disclaimer saying, hey, you know, I'm I'm not going to hold the society accountable. But not always do my marshals carry those waivers, so I have to carry extra copies of those waivers, and I have to make sure, you know, hey, marshal, this guy have you verified his status with the society? If not, can he sign a waiver? So that you basically have to babysit the cats. And it's 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 actually a fun job if you if you don't get into the the weeds of oh my gosh I have to do this because honestly it, it is a really fun job because you get to actually interact with everybody within your your shire or your barony or your kingdom mm -hmm. at a level that is it's different but it, it it it's pushed me to be more involved which I was not as involved before I again I've been here thirty five years but I'm I, you know I'm just I'm just that guy you know but now that I'm you know, essential of the barony, I'm actually having to show up to more events. I'm having to do more fighter practices I'm doing. So it, it actually is um, one of the reasons I took took the position was because it actually motivated me to do more. And I, I love the game. I've been playing the game for 35 years, as I said, but this has been the most motivated in the game I've been in a very, very long time. That's very cool. So you... Um... You mentioned since you're the legal representative and you have to be warranted and have a background check, how do you actually apply to be Seneschal and how is Seneschal selected and how does the warrant and the background check and all of that happen? So there are several different areas that could take place um, on the smaller groups like Villa. You basically say who wants to do the job and Whoever raises their hand, sorry, Torval, gets stuck with the job. Um, and the barony level, the, the barony has requests applications to serve. And so you sign a, you know, hey, I, I, I intend to put my name in the hat for Seneschal. And so the barony and then takes these people and they kind of do a vote of the populace, but they keep that fairly private. Then they meet with all the individuals and do interviews. And then that person is, um, you know, talked to with the current Seneschal. And if the current Seneschal can use them as a deputy and feels that they can work in the role. So there are several layers of getting to that position. Um, when my previous tenure as a Shire Seneschal, um, it was it was very similar to, you know, hey, who wants the job? And then it was, then can you pa pass a background exam? So once, once the barony has selected you as your deputy Seneschal, then you have to apply to the kingdom Seneschal to there's a there's a form on the web page you say hey here's my intent to serve fill out your intent to serve on the web page that goes to the kingdom seneschal and once that's been accepted by the kingdom seneschal you have to ask the kingdom seneschal to then do a background check for you and that will start your uh your warrant and it's usually a two-year background warrant yeah. anybody who has an interest in becoming a seneschal should i would say try to be a deputy first 
um, and learn to see if that's a position that you are have an interest in and, you know, kind of uh, shadow your seneschal and see what all things they do, or just ask them a million questions of, you know, things that they do on a daily basis, or just watch um, what they do and see if, um, if it's something that you'd want to do um, before you actually apply for it. Um, but you can learn a lot just in that role. Yeah, it's, it's very rewarding when you're, mm -hmm. when you're keeping up with it. It's, it's very tedious if you fall behind. That is true. Yeah, don't fall behind. You gotta be organized. I think Deputy Shabbos would be a great place for somebody that's thinking about to start. If you go ask about being Shai at the shire level, I think you'll get it right then and there. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to be a deputy here? Boom, you're a deputy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was thinking about the Seneschal here. You're Seneschal. <laughs> you're yeah, so, so the the qualifications though, um, literally, it should be somebody who has organizational skills somebody has communication skills because that is a huge part of it that is uh, somebody who um can pass a background has, check. yeah can pass a background check a national background check yeah. um somebody who also is um able to you know read the society handbook and actually follow the rules of the society handbook because that's that's the, that's the big kicker is you have to you have to know when what what they're doing out there is wrong you have to be able to say, I know that's wrong. We have to stop and we have to reorganize. And you have to have the, uh, you have to have the presence to be able to tell them to stop. That's, that's probably the hardest part. You say, Oh, we can't do that. Something else that you need to do too is, is maybe not make um, rash decisions. Um, you know, when somebody brings you something, think about it for a little bit, let them know that you'll get back with them. Um, but try not to make decisions on the spot. Um, if at all possible, that way you can, think about it. You can review the handbook if you need to. You can ask other seneschals or other leaders, um, you know, their input and everything before you actually make decisions. So um, just kind of have a level head. And that's true at every level. Like there are things that I got as kingdom seneschal that I sat on for three days because it's like, all right, you know what? I need some space. I get it. I already have my answer. I'm going to sit on it for a minute. Think about it. And then, you know, see if I feel the same way in a day or two. Um, it's, it's a good, it's not a, a rule rule, but it's a, it's a good guideline. Yeah. Give yourself a little bit of time when stuff comes in. Yeah. At the barony level, I've seen it several times, as, as I mentioned before, that, you know, you'll be presented with a problem and there's a whole list of feedback going through the officer's chat on the, on the, the Facebook request. And you're like, you just ping in there. I see it. I can't deal with it at the moment because I'm doing a you know mundane life, but I will get back to you. But by, by the time I get back to it, there's a lot of times where it will have already resolved itself. Yeah. And don't be afraid to tell the person or people that, you know, you don't have the answer right now. You're going to look into it and you'll get back with them um, on it. You know, just that kind of communication um, helps as well. So that way they can feel seen. Okay, so a lot of you have talked about this being herding cats. It's really rewarding. It helps you get involved in things. How do you avoid burnout in this position? You definitely need to take breaks. Um, sometimes you might take over a seneschal position from someone who has faced burnout um, and they need that relief instantly. Um, and so sometimes um, you yourself just need to take breaks. Um, you need to communicate with other people and really talk to your officers because um, I think that they could be a really good support. They are, should be a good support system um, for you. So that way you don't face burnout. You can let them know, hey guys, I'm really feeling it right now. Can someone step in and, and kind of help herd the cat, so to speak? Um, and I think you'll find that support system if you, know, if you have really good communication with them. Your baronage too um, you know, should be able to help you in that. Um, and just communicate really well. Let, let people know where you're at because your mundane life can wreak havoc sometimes. And, and, you know, being a seneschal just, you know, compounds that. And sometimes you need to have that break. And so communicating and letting people know what's going on. Yeah, I, I found that um, our monthly meetings, it's a great place to, you know, we, we have our hot topics, which is events that we're, we're, we're tracking or where bids we're tracking. And then we have officer reports. Everybody does in the officer positions has reports and we document all that. But then at the very end, I op open the table to anybody. You got something going on. Let's hear it. 
if you if you have errors we have to err let's err them let's figure it out but um also to avoid the burnout um make sure everybody's doing their part that way you don't have to take on everything um the biggest problem i had when i first started was the seneschal was doing a lot more than the seneschal needed to do so i made sure that you know our our marshal for our, our rattan fighting had a deputy for youth combat also had a deputy for quartermaster for the for a loaner year find somebody to fill those positions uh, it's the same same thing with our arts and science i made sure she she was able to find a deputy make sure your your officers are taken care of um if they're they're happy they're doing their job that takes a lot of load off the senator um the other, the other thing is you know as as toby said you know you, you don't want to you know jump out of this hat jump into another hat you know take some time for yourself um if if you say you know i i i've, I've i'll attend all the meetings and all the the events in my local area because i'm i'm the baronial senator i have to but you know, I don't have to travel every single weekend. If, if I need a break from the SCA, I, I take that break. I talk to the Baron and say, hey, Baron, I'm not going to be there. You know, you got this. And he says, yeah, I got this. So just communicate with your other officers, your intent, what you plan on doing or what you don't plan on doing. That way, if we have to have a representative there, there's somebody there. Yeah. But yeah, um, it's very important that you, you set your boundaries. Uh, make sure everybody knows your boundaries as well. Because um, if there are things that, the position requires you to do, but you do not feel comfortable doing them. Like I, I hate public speaking, uh, which is probably scary because I do it all the time, but I hate doing it. Um, and everybody knows I hate doing it, but I do it every month because of the officer meeting and I make sure everybody is communicated with, but you know, at the same time, if I can avoid it, like they want me to speak in court. Nope. Nope. I will not do that. Sorry. I'm not doing it. So. Same. <laughs> but yeah, set 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 your boundaries. Make sure they know what those boundaries are, because if they know what the boundaries are, they won't push your boundaries often. And the relationship between you and your your populace is so much easier. No, um, it makes a, makes the job easier. Yeah, find a deputy as soon as you can. Um, as soon as you step into the role, start looking for your replacement, because the moment you find your replacement and they're pretty serious about it, um, you can actually you you know build a partnership with them. Um, and I wouldn't say tag team, but you can actually um, bounce ideas and thoughts and everything off of each other. So that way um, you're each other's support system. And then, you know, when you step down and they step up, you can be their support system until they find a, a partnership with someone else, too. Um, so it helps a lot. Well, that's, that's also having a deputy is important if you have to do a quorum, um, especially at the, the uh, Shire level, because you don't have a baron and baroness to throw into the forum. Yeah. So having a deputy for most of your positions helps. And again, um, if you're putting a forum together and you're needing other people, and even in the Shire level, um, your peers are, are a great resource. They've been there. They've done it. Don't have to reinvent the wheel if you can get those peers active and keeping things moving and helping you out and advising you, um, per se. And then um, the, other, the other resources and... I, I, I know I haven't had to, to throw too much at Galen or Julia, but you're, we, we, we answer to the Kingdom Seneschal. The Kingdom Seneschal, if we don't have the answer, you know, everything flows downhill, but sometimes you have to push it uphill to, to see, you know, okay, I had this problem. I can't resolve this problem. Do you have any ideas how I can attack this problem? So use your resources. Again, your peers, your populace and then again your kingdom advocates yeah it's also important to remember every officer position um has a term mm -hmm. um and it's a set term that you're you're not supposed to exceed unless you absolutely have to um and for most officer positions that's two years i lived in a tiny shire that was barely big enough to be a shire for 10 years I get that a lot of hat passing ends up happening in that kind of a situation. So it's not always possible to only stick to your two years, or if you do, you're onto another position. You don't have a lot of time in between. Um, but it is important to try and stick to that two year, um, two year uh, limit because every job has something um, that it requires of you. 
and you've got to make sure that you have that. Um, the Seneschalit is probably, along with the Exchequer, it's probably the most important positions in the SCA because it keeps it going. Yeah. Um, if the Seneschal doesn't file a report, that group ceases to exist. Um, so uh, there's some amount of leeway in that, obviously, but uh, it doesn't cease to exist right away. But if it goes on, then yeah, they do. And that includes the kingdom. So like if the kingdom Seneschal stops filing reports for their kingdom, oh, guess what? The kingdom goes away. That sucks. Then people don't get to play and it's not cool. So in a very real sense, you are keeping the society going, whether it's at the Shire level, the kingdom level, society level, it's all, it we all work together to make sure that that infrastructure is there so that we can all go out on the weekends and have fun. Keeping that in mind helps keep me going even when things are tough. Yeah. Cause I love the SCA and that is another thing. It's not required, but man, it helps. If you really love what you're doing, <laughs> then you're willing to do a lot of things for it. Um, anyway. Okay, so you mentioned when things get tough. Um, what would you say is the most difficult part of the job? <laughs> Sometimes at a local level, like at a baronial level, we have um, things that occur all the time. Like every year we'll have different demos that um, are pretty much re on repeat. Um, sometimes finding volunteers to help out in certain areas that are not so fun of those demos. Um, that's, that's where the struggles can kind of come into play. Uh, it's just asking people for that help. Uh, we all want to help, but sometimes we want to be a little stingy with our time and not help in those not so pleasant areas and, or areas that they don't find enjoyable. Uh, and that's, that's about the struggle that um, I, I think we find, but just kind of, you know, letting them realize, hey, you know, we're a team, we're all taking it together, and, you know, we all need to play our part, and sometimes that means taking on something that you're not used to or not, uh, don't find it exactly enjoyable. Um, sometimes you just got to do it for a little bit. Um, yeah. well, the biggest, biggest struggle bus we're having at the Barony level is finding a winter site, because our old winter site is no longer, so the Seneschal is in charge of finding the brigade to mm -hmm. find options for the winter site. So we, we have a new winter site. We're, uh, this is our last week at the park. So um, I'm excited about that. But um, the other thing that is uh, the responsibility of the Seneschal is making sure we um, respond to kingdom required bids for events. That's something we haven't talked about. But um, quarterly, um, the kingdom comes out with this calendar that has Crown tourneys, ANS, and um, four nations. Um, those events have to have a bid. Now, anybody, any shire or any uh, barony can put together a voluntary bid, but the baronies in a rotating cycle are required to put in a bid for one every year. So, like last year, we did a coronation. By November of this year, we have to have a bid for a Crown tourney 2025. So that's the other thing we have to make sure is we have to keep those bids rolling. Yeah. We keep a sheet. Yeah, in a barony, that's the case. Yeah. yeah. We keep that, a... That's not required at the Shire level. Again, Shires can voluntarily put in bids for those events, but mm -hmm. they are due from the barony as a requirement of the barony. Yep. Yeah, we keep a running sheet of all the sites that we've had in the past and things that, like, as we're driving, we'll see, oh, that's kind of a cool site if we see someone's getting married somewhere. Um, we always put that down as an idea. So we're always adding to it. As a matter of fact, our state fair is happening. Um, and so if somebody asked about the state fair location, Hey, that'd be a great location for an event. Has anybody looked into it? Well, we did years ago, but you know, keep it on the list. So you can always ask again for future ones. So even those that we no longer have, um, you might be surprised if you swing back to them, you know, years later, you might have been under new management, new leadership, and those options might change again. Um, we found a couple of those, so um, that's helped at least some options that we have. Uh, one of the harder things, I think, at the kingdom level is if you have um, requests from the crown that conflict with your your uh, obligations to the society. <laughs> um, that can be difficult to handle. 
Uh, again, it's important. Uh, I, I think it was Elysia was saying that it was important to uh, remove your ego from it. Yeah, that that's true. It is a job and you are doing it. You have to remove your ego and you also have to work with uh, the crown or the baronage. I mean, it works at the baronial level too. If you're a baronial seneschal and there are disagreements about how things should happen, you got to work through it. Yeah. There, there are times you have to write a letter that you don't agree with, but it's the letter from the post, not the letter from the individual. And to remember the limitations of your office too. Like if the crown comes to you and they tell you they want a new law, right? It's your responsibility to go and make sure that what they've asked for is in keeping with corpora and keeping with the, the society policy at the time. But if it is, whether you agree with that new law or not, that's their purview. Yeah. You go ahead and review it, make sure it matches, and you go ahead and give them a write up on it. So for the Shire Seneschals, what is what do you consider the most difficult thing you guys have encountered in the role? Um, for my particular Shire, it is motivating people who have been in the SCA for a long time and held a number of positions and might be multi multi peers to actually be willing to do something on a local level as opposed to only playing on a kingdom or multi kingdom level and saying, Hey, we still do fun things here. Um, yes, that, you know, wars and Penzik and Gulf Wars are fantastic, but we, we have fun here too. And we want you to be a part of it. And we love your stories of back in the day. So yeah, but that motivating, especially like the newer folks, usually really easy for me to motivate. It's the folks who have been in for a while that are the challenge to motivate. Though they're great with talking to the new folks about all the cool things and the ans and the fighting and it's just getting them to maybe participate with you know coming to meetings or coming to the events that we hold stuff like that i've been kind of luckily here though i haven't had too many difficulties um, i have a great core group that have all taken on their jobs and made my job really easy. If you have the right people in the right spots, it's just making sure the cats are in the right position. Um, we've come into difficulties with uh, uh, doing events and conflicts with, with other events and then having, we're now searching for a new site because our site got booked for a wedding. So we're handling that crisis um, and we'll just making sure everybody's level-headed and relaxed and okay this is just a hobby uh, it's not the end of the world we will get through this excellent yeah the finding an open weekend to host an event and not conflicting with another is is getting more difficult for everybody i think yeah um okay good, well, good I think... problem when you have multiple outlets every weekend mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's doesn't say a little harder on the draw when people are having to travel to you. If they have to pass another event to get to you, it hurts your attendance counts, and that's hard on groups out on the edge of kingdom. Yeah, that's the other one of the other essential positions you have to take care of is um, to get the uh, events on the calendar. The essential has to be the one that contacts the uh, the kingdom officer to submit the event to the calendar and to the uh the reefs mm -hmm. excellent okay well, we've talked about difficulties i guess let's talk about what is the most rewarding part several of you have mentioned how rewarding the position can be what's what's your favorite part of it i guess you get to meet new people people that uh within your barony or your group that you never would have probably talk to you think you know you don't see them very often and all of a sudden you know they become a really good close friend and everything and you never would have have maybe experienced that had they not come to you with something you know as a seneschal and all of a sudden you know you got a you got a new friend so that's nice i think that's that's probably been one of the biggest things for me my most rewarding experience is when everything is running smoothly and they don't <laughs> have to call me yeah that's always nice. 
I enjoy court watching my new shire get awards and we have a small shire up northwest Iowa brand new and we got five tourists three swans uh, queen's chalice it's seeing all those people get up and you're like they're they're my group that's me and so I take pride in that I absolutely love seeing new folks just get into it and start talking to people and start like learning new things and that this isn't just a hobby it's 17 hobbies wrapped into one and that look on their face of I found my people I found the people who love the things I love and folks who've been in for a long time who meet these new people and they get re-inspired to get you know to to play more or to take on a you know a mentorship of a new person it's just uh, I feel like I'm seeing it from the inside instead of seeing it from a distance. And I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Knowing mm-hmm. that you've made that basically created the, the environment for that to happen is pretty awesome. Yeah. Like Torkel said, seeing that, that growth, you know, being a new, either a new group or a group that um, struggles to get the locals to come back out for whatever reason seeing that group um, grow again and start attending other events um, is nice too. You kind of, you kind of become a family again. It's nice. Thank you guys again for coming out and sharing with us. This has been wonderful. Um, Let's end with, do you have one piece of advice to give somebody thinking about applying for Seneschal? What is that going to be? do it talk to your current (laughs) shawl and ask to you know ask to be their deputy or Mm -hmm. find out what's involved yep give it a shot yeah the rewards for being inside a shawl way outweigh the the work that goes involved that just seeing the the shire or baronial row underneath your watch and seeing that outweighs any possible work you put into it it's really not that hard uh read the books uh follow the rules and have fun yeah. and that's 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 the biggest takeaway have fun if you we're not doing this if we're not having fun yeah um don't be afraid to uh try new things I mean, the SCA in general is about trying new things. It's a million hobbies in one. Um, but if you're if you're thinking about doing an officer position of any kind, um, talk to the people who do it. Find out what's involved, and don't be afraid to give it a shot. Somebody has to do it every two years, so <laughs> that's that's, the, that's, that's the how idea. those of us who have been in a while end up doing all sorts of different officer positions because well, somebody got to do it every two years. Yep. Well, I think we will end the recording there. Thank you guys so much for coming out and sharing with us.